month that I think for this great month of April that the Lord has given us that we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Uh, like somebody said, we're gonna make it. Yes, we are. And so, and with that being the case, there's a word that comes from the word today, and it's an awesome word, at least in my expectations, it is. Uh, and once again, lifting out that passage of scripture from Luke 12, you may remain seated, verse 8 through 9. He says, I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. Look at somebody say, mm, mm, mm. But whoever disowns me, look at somebody say, you don't want to do that. Whoever disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. Oh, look at somebody and say, OMG. Oh, for those of you I just lost, that's new school for, oh my God. Lord have mercy. And, and God has shown me a word today, a brief word, because we've got to turn around and be right back here again on Tuesday. And I'm expecting to see all of you here Tuesday with all of your friends and all your kinfolk and everybody else uh, that is going to be with you out here on Tuesday. But God gave me a word today from this word because he told me that if we're serious about making, if we're serious about being all that he has called us in to be and all that he is calling us out of, then we have got to understand that the one thing that's stopping so many believers is denial. Oh, I wish I had somebody with me. It's denial. Denial. Your denial of who he is. Your denial to stand up in a storm. Your denial to fight your way through. Your denial to believe Believe that there's nothing that's too big or that there's nothing that God can't handle. Your denial is separating you from your miracle. Your denial is separating you from that, that open door. Your denial, the denial that you have in your life where you won't just believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that there's nothing that my God can't handle. Your denial when folk try to put you on the carpet because of who your relationship is or what it should be that denial, that denial that young people have that sing in the choir and do great things but then go out into the world and act like the rest of the world instead of the child of God you've been called out to be. I'm a praise him by myself. That denial that some grown folk have that when you're up in the churches, oh how I love Jesus but when you get around a certain group of people, can't nobody get a peep out of you. That denial is stopping and separating you from a relationship and a destiny with the Lord. Oh my God, here we go, here we go. Jesus, he makes this thing simple in this 12th chapter. He begins with talking to the people of that day about the hypocrisy of the church leadership in verses 1 through 7. He begins to explain to them that service without substance is a losing agenda. He begins to make them understand that when it comes down to the this work of the Lord that you can't do this work because you want power prestige position or control because sooner or later the commitment that it takes to be a child of God will catch up with you and, and will deal with you and will put you on the carpet uh, he's trying to get the people to understand the danger of following people who live in hypocrisy or oh, I wish I had somebody with me because it seems as though people that live within the realms of hypocrisy like to be infectious toward other people and drag other people into this type of mindset and Jesus is trying to break this thing down but then starting here in verse number 8 there is what I call a spiritual volcanic uproar because Jesus shifts from just talking about the church Jesus shifts from talking about the leadership of the church at a point that I was sure that he was going to stay there for a while and minister and really break this thing down Jesus goes on to another category, Jesus goes on to another level and he decides to give us an early peek an early glimpse of the heavenly rule book or better put he decides to show us the guidelines of the salvation framework that all mankind will have to be a part of to praise God oh I feel like preaching this thing for just a few minutes today you see Jesus begins in verse number 8 by saying I 
I tell you. Now, church, now, church, let me just say this for just a moment. Uh, if I can go there for just a second. Early in this text, at any time, the Bible, in the Bible, that it says, Jesus says, or it starts off with, I say, or I tell you. That means that you're about to be entitled to some information that no one else has ever heard before. Or oh, I think I'll preach it anyhow. Uh, anytime the word of God starts off with Jesus saying, I say, or I tell you so, that means you're about to get something that nobody has ever gotten. That you're about to get something that is truly exclusive. And that's exactly what it is that Jesus does. He decides to give some exclusive information as it relates to denial and as it relates to having a relationship. Because Jesus, in one breath, is condemning the leadership. But in the next breath, he declares that in as it relates to salvation, that salvation is open season to any and everybody. But, but also, also that is equally tied to what does or what does not come out of your mouth. Oh, I feel like preaching this thing. Jesus ties it in and he makes it clear that it's not just about where you go. It's not just about how you pray, but it's also equally about what it is that comes out of your mouth. Look at the word in verse 8 because Jesus says whoever or as the King James Version says whosoever and I could just preach a sermon on just that one word right there because Jesus says whoever and that means it's not just for the preacher whoever not just the deacons whoever not just the prayer warriors whoever not just the folk that started the church whoever not just the folk with the best attendance but whoever means uh, the addict has got some provisions whoever means the person with the prison record has got some provision whoever means the person that walked up in here this day with shame all over your body from the top of your head down to the soles of your feet whoever means the one that's knee deep today with guilt and sin about something that you've done whoever oh I'll just give them a pray by myself includes those folk that you turned your nose up at today because you don't think they have no value in your life or any value to the church am I preaching to somebody whoever means that when it comes down to serving Jesus the Christ that everybody has got a fair shake with Jesus everybody has got a shot with Jesus everybody is entitled to some blessings with Jesus everybody can get some provisions with Jesus whoever means it don't matter what you've done as long as you come to the father the right way and tell God about your sorrows and tell God about your sin it don't matter what somebody thinks about you all that matters is how your father in glory sees you do I have some whoever folk up in the house today yeah. you might look prepping you might look proper but behind the scenes or under that smile you got some whoever issues going on in your life and if it was not for the grace of God and the mercy of God and the goodness of God you couldn't have got up today where my whosoever folk up in here today Oh, don't be sitting there like you holy. You know you got some whosoever in you. Or if you don't have none now, you had some back in the day. And if it wasn't for God. Yes, Jesus takes this text and he ties it to your tongue. And he ties it to my tongue. Look at it, church. Jesus says, whosoever shall confess me or go public about me. In other words, salvation is afforded to all, but to the one who will stand up for me in the lunchroom or, or the one who will stand up for me in the locker room or the one who will stand up in me for me in the laundry mat. I'm talking to some whoever right now, whosoever will not be closed lipped in the club, who will not be closed lipped around family members, whosoever when it comes down to me will not be closed lipped when the drugs come out or the whiskey starts getting poor. Whosoever will not be closed-lipped about me and my goodness when folks start cussing. You don't start cussing trying to fit in with folks. You start letting folks know that you're done with that because you got a reason to celebrate life. Oh, I wish I had somebody with me. The one who is willing to confess about me in spite of where you are. Do I have anybody here that don't care about where you are? Jesus is still Jesus. You don't care if you up in straps. 
You don't care if you at Country Market. You don't care if you at Aldi's, Walmart, Walgreens, or CVS store. God has been good, and when he leads you to praise, you're going to set your bucket to the side and put your stuff to the side, and you're going to get a word that praise on for the Lord. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been someplace? Maybe you were in a phone booth, and the Spirit of the Lord got up in you, and you just couldn't keep it to yourself, and you start singing down the aisle, praising God down the aisle, looking at folk down the aisle, testifying down the aisle, and telling folk, I'm not crazy, it's just that God has been so good to me that I can't keep this stuff to myself. Say yeah! Whosoever will not be discouraged when you go to the doctor's office. Or there's so many folk, you lose your mind when you go to the doctor's office. Start believing that the doctor is the doctor. Oh, I think I just said something. Anybody here know that when you go in the doctor's office, that's the best time to depend on the doctor. Because the doctor has got the final say so over everything. So you're going to give him the praise in the doctor's office. You're going to give him the praise in the x ray room. You're going to give him the praise in the waiting room. Oh, do I have any courthouse people in here? You stood before the judge and the jury, and you didn't deserve the grace or the mercy that you got. But did God do it for you? And now you can't keep it to yourself? Oh, give him a praise up in here. There's somebody saying, deny him. Jesus is saying in verse 8, because you went there for me, yeah, you gave me a praise in spite of what was going on. Because you did not deny me when you were in your fifth trouble. Because you did not deny me when the circumstances looked bad. Because you did not deny me when the world was requiring you to say no. Because you did not deny me and you praised my name. I'm going to go to the angels that sit before my father. Oh, I think I just said something. I'm going to go to the angels that sit before my father. Guess why I can go to the angels, Reverend Rita? Because I control the angels. I tell the angels what to do. Well, I ain't saying the angels got no power. When I go to the angels, I tell the angels what to go back and communicate to my father and because you didn't deny me I'm going to go back to the angels and I'm going to tell the angels to go get my daddy and then tell my daddy guess what you all right with me is there anybody here that wants Jesus to communicate a word for you is there anybody here that wants Jesus to go back to the angels and say Reverend Jones is all right with me Sister Upshaw is all right with me Johnny Moody is all right with me Shirley is all right with me the Jackson family are all right with me yeah is there anybody that wants Jesus to go back and sing the word just for you he's all right with me oh get him a praise up here denial Reverend Jones he can get you in trouble denial Denial, Angie, will take people out the box. Denial, see, we are, we living in a world that wants us to have what I call a Michael Jackson ministry. Oh, I'm not talking about Mike. He's a bad boy, and he's from Gary, Indiana. I thank God for Michael Jackson. But I'm talking about that one song that he made, Keep It In The Closet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we are, we are told uh, that our beliefs should be private. Or do I have anybody know what I'm talking about? We told it, it's supposed to be private. Uh, they don't want you talking about who Jesus is. Folk will be content. Your religious belief is your religious belief. And I think you should keep it to yourself. Uh, when I stop by to tell you today that that's nothing but a ploy of the enemy. <laughs> because the enemy knows that he can keep this side of the room quiet. And he can keep this part of the church quiet. And he can keep the young people quiet. And he can keep Keep those with sickness in their body quiet. If he can keep the musicians quiet. If he can keep the ushers quiet. If he can keep the nurses quiet. If he can keep the whole church quiet. Won't nobody open up their mouth and give God what he deserves. But I heard the Bible say that if you remain quiet, I'll make the rocks cry out. Is there anybody? 
but by my Father in heaven. Look at that. He says blessed. That means that means that means we says blessed. Can I teach right there? That means that means that means that you shall be blessed. Now, because you confessed me, you are about to be blessed. Or well, there's somebody here right now. You just needed that. Uh, you thinking about it's gonna be a money that gets you out of problem. Somebody go rest you out of rescue out of problem. It's your confession. He says because you confess who I am, you are about to be blessed. Push somebody on the shoulder and say you about to be blessed. Yes, yes, verse number 18. First tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I'm about to build on you. I'm about to build around you. And I'm about to build through you. Oh, put somebody on the shoulder for the second time and tell them, you're about to get an addition. Yeah, because you opened up your mouth. Uh, because you spoke some words uh, about me.
you access. If, wait a minute. Maybe I miss her. If I don't give you access, then I'm going to turn around and whatever. What else did he say? Whatever you bind on earth, you will be bound on earth. Come on now. Read the rest of it. On earth will be loose in heaven. See, y'all, you get that. If you did a whole church, you'd be standing right now. You know what he said when he says that? I'm about to give you some authority. Oh. Yeah. This ain't for everybody. Yeah. 
Why not bless somebody? Sometimes you can't tell everybody everything God tells you. See, I believe that when we acknowledge him, that the Holy Ghost runs to back to the gates of heaven. And then it tells God's angels, turn your channels to him. Turn your channels to her. Turn your station to them. And I believe that the three of them, God is Father, God is Son, and God has the Holy Ghost. I believe they all sit down around the big, the big plasma in glory. And then they open it. They start opening doors, start come closed doors, start coming open. Windows that were shut prior start to be pried open and then release of breakthroughs, get in the atmosphere and get in the air on your behalf because you choose not to deny who he is in your time of trouble. Somebody here today, you need to tell God, I'll never deny you again. I might be in some stuff right now, but I'm not going to deny it. It may look bad, but I'm not going to deny it. I'm going to praise you today, just like I did. Or I'm going to praise you right now. Or it's shouting time. I'm going to praise you right now, like I already got it. Because all I want to do is piss the devil off. Is anybody up in here want to piss the devil off? Tonight, you all can be seated. You can go back to your seat. Thank you so much for what you've done. Give God a hand clap of praise. Yes, 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 yes. But tonight, 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 all we got to talk about tonight. Look at what Jesus says about folk that deny him in verse number nine. I'm going to get this thing for you, and I'm going to read it to you out of the King James. There are some things I like to have spoken out of the King James. Amen? Amen. I want you to hear verse number nine out of the King James. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Ready for this? But he that denieth me, is that word? He that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men, meaning you, when people call you on the carpet, ask you why you saved, ask you why you born again, when folks try to get you to do stuff that you know you shouldn't do. It. Jesus says that when you deny me in front of men, you shall be denied before the angels of God. Oh, that's heavy stuff right there. You see, I believe that Jesus, when he sees us in denial, I believe he gets on his email account. I believe he starts to Googling his daddy. I believe he starts blogging his daddy. And he has a conversation with the same angels. And he says to the same angels, they play in church instead of being a Christian. They play with me instead of being for real. They denied me when, when they got called on the carpet about if I was me that did. When they got called on the carpet carpet about, am I the good Savior? When they got called on the carpet about, am I living in the valley? When they got called on the carpet, they chose to spotlight themselves instead of spotlighting me. He says, will you deny me? What's the folk up in here today? It got real quiet real quick, but I got to say that because I'm saving some souls right now. Your denial is what's keeping you from being pleasing in the eyes of God. Your denial, your denial when you were around your friends and when you're around your crew and you start trying to act and do with everybody else but all of the blood that Jesus has poured over you and all the salvation that Jesus has gave to you when you think how can you deny me when you deny me I go back to my father and I tell my father they saying one thing but they live in another, another. Yeah. Yeah. help somebody come on yes. I'm trying to yes Lord come on I hear somebody say, well, Pastor, can you help me and, and just tell me how it is? Can you tell me how I know if I'm living in denial? And I wrote down 
three or maybe five things. And if you want to jot these down, I don't care if you write them on your hand or the back of your hand. I don't care if you put it on your dress or on your coach back. You want to jot these down. I don't care if you put it inside your Bible. You want to do something. You want to write these down. This is serious. Look at somebody. It's real talk. It's real talk. It's real talk. How do you know that you are living in denial? Are you ready? Yeah. Number one, when you don't want nobody to know that you are a child of God. Oh my God. You don't want nobody to know. You'd rather come to church and be in church and go back in the world and blend in with everybody else. You out here being, not saying you a Christian, but when that dude roll up on you or when that sister roll up on you that you think you'd be better off with instead of being staying patient and waiting on the Lord, you start trying to put on every kind of facade you can to fit in. When well, you don't want nobody to know you are a child of God, good chances are you are in denial. Number two, when you keep your mouth shut, when wrong is going on around you, Lord have mercy, God has been too good to you for you to watch somebody put their mouth on somebody else or hurt somebody else or do some kind of wrong and you just sit there like ain't no Jesus up in you and keep your mouth shut because it's more important to you to be liked by somebody than to say, I got to remove myself from this situation because God has got to for me. I wish I had somebody with me. If you are living like that, good chances are you are in denial. Here we go. Here we go. Number three is different from number one. When nobody knows where you stand. Ooh, we. Oh, you sitting around folk and they acting like a fool and doing everything under the sun. You just sitting there, ain't saying nothing, ain't giving no confirmation one way or the other about the Jesus that's up in you. Folk doing crazy stuff and you just sitting there. You just blending in. Don't nobody know. You ain't got enough up in you like Petros, like Peter did, to say he is the Messiah, the son of the living God. And I can't stomach this stuff and I can't swallow this stuff and I can't just sit here with somebody trying to tell me that God ain't good. I can't just sit here with somebody trying to tell me I need to rip off somebody so I can make somebody. I can't just sit here and believe I can steal and then I'm going to get a hit. I can't just sit here and be a part of your plan. I'm better than that because God has raised me up from worse than what you could ever imagine. I can't just sit here and not let you know, guess what? I'm coming out right now. I'm a child of God. Bought and paid for with the blood. I've been stretched out. I've been lied on. I've been crucified. But guess what? I made it through. Bro. And I promised him when I made it through that I was able to just sit here and on. So I'm going to testify right now. Is there anybody here right now that wants to come out of the closet and just tell him I'm your child? I'll tell him I want to make sure that you know. Situation. Yeah. Come on. 
When you work hard and have it to work, you want to be liked so bad by the world that you will do whatever it is that the world asks of you in spite of how good Jesus has been to you. If you are this way, chances are you are in denial. Oh, I gotta teach this thing right now. I was I was in Florida and, uh, and I was there and the Archbishop and I think I shared this on a Wednesday night. Uh, he talked about how it is that they had talked about him, Bishop Williams. How they had talked about him in the newspaper for three straight days. They accused him of ripping off the church. They accused him of running up church credit cards. They accused him of stealing everything under the sun. They just made up a lie after lie after lie after lie. And isn't it amazing how when folks say bad things about you, everybody hears it. But when folks pat you on your back, nobody seems to know about it. I wish I had a witness in my head. So he said, he said, that, he said that that was the best thing that ever could have happened to him. And I know church conference is full. It's packed from the front to the back at Pastor Paula White's church. It's packed up. And he said, this is the best thing that could have ever happened to me. So I'm sitting on the first row because she asked me as her first row guest. And I couldn't let that get away. With the whole place packed, I raised my hand because I was feeling this man. And I said, can you tell me why that was? was the best thing that ever could have happened to you. He said it was the best thing that ever could have happened to me because after they shredded my character, that means I had no more character. So that means I was the greatest enemy of the devil. You see, you couldn't say nothing no worse about me because I've been talked about just as bad as you can talk about me. And that means I don't have to fit in with nobody. That means I have to keep up no reputation. That means I don't have to worry about what nobody thinks. I'm not the word about what nobody says. I can weigh in on anything I want to weigh in on. I'm trying to bless somebody right now that feels like you've been ripped apart and you've been torn apart and folk have turned your back. You thought it was done to hurt you but God did to free you up. God did so that you would have a voice and you have to worry about keeping up no pedigree or keeping up no reputation because the only reputation you want is that you can one day be seated at the, at the table of the Father when Everybody else that's sitting up in glory. Is there anybody here that knows what I'm talking about? I'm not trying to make a name. I just want everybody to know the name of Jesus. Last thing. Holy Ghost gave me this before I came out. When you 50 50, chances are you are in denial. Yeah, you got one foot in the church and one foot out of the church. You can take church or leave it. You can come, you can stay at home. You can give your time or it don't matter to you if you don't. You can be a part of ministry or it don't matter to you if you miss ministry. When you 50-50, chances are you've been in denial. I can hear my, my Savior saying, I can hear him saying, Jesus Christ, you want to know why your prayers go unanswered? You want to know why heaviness is still in your house? House? Well, I want to quit right there, but I can't, so I am. You want to know why your madness won't stop? Because you won't even mention my name in a crowd. You won't acknowledge that it was me that gave you your miracle. You want to know why you still got issues going on? Why I won't take away your troubles? Why I won't take away your trial? I can't even get you to stand up when I say testify. You want to be in and come out of denial, and you ought to give me the praise for doing everything in your life. You ought to give me the praise right now for being a Waymaker. You ought to give me the praise right now for right being now. a prayer keeper. You ought to give me the praise right now for having your back. You ought to oh give me the praise God. right now. Nobody should have to tell you. I should have to tell you right now to get up on your feet and give him a praise. You should want to praise him just because you're thinking about right now what he did for you on yesterday or what he did for you all night or what he did for you all this morning. You ought to come out of denial and realize if it wasn't for Jesus, where would you be right I'm saying, you don't know why things stay the same? Because when you can shine the light on me, you continue to try to shine it upon yourself. Right. People ought to know who you are. Yeah. They ought to know who you are. Come on. People ought to know who you are. It should be, if anybody 
should know who Jesus is. If anybody should not be in the night, it should be this church and this body of Christ. Oh, I, I wish I had some prayer. I wish I had some, I had some Holy Ghost filled for me. Oh, please go when I say all of you this church. Because we would deny. But God said, because you didn't deny me, I'm going to make a way for you right now. Come out of the night. You know, I had something happen the other day. It was a, got a phone call, and it was a chief of police. And he started a, a midnight basketball league, and he's put a lot into it. And there was a, a, a fight or, or some kind of incident that broke out at the midnight basketball league. And the fight was quickly dispersed. But you know how it goes. Whenever some negative happening gets all over the place, everybody starts talking about it. So it was talked about to the degree that they were trying to get the chief to cancel the Midnight Basketball League and to just pull the plug on it totally and not do it because they were saying the behavior patterns of the people in Gary and North Wilson is just out of control and, and there's no way in the world we can do this. So you need to stop it right now. You need to stop it. But the chief is wanting to do this league because he believed that if there was an outlet that was put in place for young men and women, 18 to 35, that instead of gang banging, a drug dealing, or being out here acting crazy, if they had some place they could come and let off some steam and know they can come there and not have to be scrutinized, that everything would cease. And so he said, I need you to do something for me, Pastor White. He said, I need you to come. I need you to speak to the Midnight Basketball League. I said, speak to him for what, Chief? He said, because you can reach them. I said, Chief, hold on a minute, man. You got all these politicians in Gary that want to, that love to have a microphone. Phone. Surely you can get one of them to come and speak to your people. He said, Maurice, I don't want them. I said, Chief, you got all these pastors in this city. I'm not trying to go there right now. They got, they all tied to all kind of alliances and everything else. All you got to do is tell them you're going to give them a crowd and I guarantee you they'll come speak to your league. He said, I don't want them to speak to the league. I said, well, can you tell me why it is that you want me to come and speak to the Midnight League? He said, absolutely. I was waiting for you ask me that instead of telling me no. He said, because there's no denying who Jesus is in you and when you speak he will I said, okay, Chief. I said, okay, Chief. I said, you know what? I'm going to come. I'm going to come. I'm going to come. I'm going to come. And I'm going to speak to your lead. Now, now, Reverend Jones was there. He was there. And Isaac Preston came. Because whenever I go somewhere, the men of this church, if their schedule allows them to, they never let me go nowhere by myself. I'll give God the praise. Give God the praise. Me. It's getting so bad that I think I'm getting soft. I think I'm getting all the anger in me, the whole angry bears is starting to leave. Because I, I ain't got to worry about them because they're always there. But, but, but this is how it is. We went there and they said, and this is true, and Reverend Jones, if I don't tell the truth, you, you stand up and you stop me at any point. They had three people there. And three people got up. And the first one got up. And you know some of our people, they, they, can, they know when you're real. And, and they know when you got it inside your soul. They know what's going on. And so here we are standing in front of people with criminal records. Me and Reverend John was sitting in the bleachers. was like, that dude been arrested three times. That dude served time. That dude over there did this. Reverend John was like, that's the dude right there that shall have a beef with me. And I had to walk away from that guy. I was like, that's the dude right there. Right? You was telling me about it. I said, yeah. I said, okay, I'm going. You know, Pastor, we already have it. We already have it. But anyway, what's going on? It's what's going on. It's going on. So we sitting there. We sitting there. And they got a first guy gets up. And he's real dignified. Listen, let me tell you that this is your league. And, and this is what the league will do for you. And, you need to do this and you need to do that. And all while he was talking, uh, they was wiping the sweat off them. The smoke would play. They was coming in the gym talking. What's up, dog? What's up? What's up? We play. All while the man was talking and speaking. And when he got through speaking, he sat down. All right, Reverend Jones? They gave the second mic to the second man. Oh, this is your league. This is what the league is going to do. It. This is what you ought to do. It. You ought to be about this. And these are your rules. And these are the rules you need to die. And da 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 da. And he's looking at him and he's still talking. Chewing gum, looking all over the room. And I've learned something through the Holy Ghost. Get, get this, y'all. God has taught me this. Whenever I'm in an environment, 
it. Some of you watching, uh, my head is always on a swivel. Uh, I'm always looking around me and checking out what's going on around. I'm just, I tell my staff, always have the alert to what's going on around you. And the second guy got through, and he says, well, y'all, well, now we got Reverend White. And here comes Reverend White. And I walk down to have the bleachers and I walk down and they look at like, oh, here we go. And they was ready for me to come to the microphone and start saying, oh, pray the Lord, pray the Lord, pray the Lord. Thank God Almighty. We just want to pray the Lord. I'm selling chicken dinners outside. Sweet potato pie out the truck. Pray the Lord, pray the Lord, pray the Lord. Let's see, I have to remember, we got Reverend Joe Taylor. Why the chief told me he wanted me to come up. And I warned the chief. I said, Chief, you know when I get up, I'm going to say whatever it is that need to come out of my mouth. And he said, Well, that's what I want you to do. And so I get there and I take the microphone. I look and I say, Listen, this lead, this man believes in. He has a vision. He's catching heat, trying to have something for you. But I'm tired of picking up the paper and seeing negative things. We got people dying in the streets every day over colors. We got people dying in the streets over negative Calling. But let me just get real with you right now. I heard that the fight broke out over words. You not a bitch because somebody called you a bitch. You not a hoe because somebody called you a hoe. You not a punk because somebody called you a punk. You a child of God. You a woman of God. And when you start acting like you got some Jesus up in you, God will do some other things for you. And if you believe in this thing and work this thing, this can be a great thing. And you can be blessed. Well, get when the first man talk, they didn't say nothing. When the second man talk, they didn't say nothing. Keep in mind, we got criminals and thugs and low man cutters. But when I got through speaking, the whole gymnasium started clapping and applauding and talking about, yeah, who you are talking about? What's your name, preacher? Where's your church at, preacher? What do you do, preacher? I want to be a part of you, preacher. What am I trying to say? If there are times when God makes you the I took all of them to the movie theater, and 
I have this thing in my heart that I do a lot for other children. But no matter how much I do with other people, I always make sure that I do the same or more with my own flesh and blood. That's right. I wish I had somebody with me. That's right. That's they right. are that important and that important to me. That's right. So I took them to the movie because they said they wanted to see a 3D movie. And when we get to the movie, Chase, who is the youngest, so it's me on the end, Chase here, Giselle, Dalen, Reese, and RJ. Reese and R. Dana down there tripping because they didn't want to go, but they went because Giselle and Chase wanted to see the movie. So we're sitting up there in the movie. Now, how many of you know what a 3D movie is? The only way you can see at a 3D movie is you got to have the 3D glasses on. Otherwise, you can't really see what's going on in the film, all right? And so Chase is, he's got this charm about him, but he's just really bad. He's a bad little kid. He, yes, he's bad. He's bad. He'll charm you, but, but he's bad. He's bad. He's bad. He's Chase's bad. I call him Chaser. Chase is bad. Chase is bad. He's got that. He's got that thing. And so I'm busting with him all pride. Digging up Shaw, digging Cox. I'm telling him, Chase, you've got to leave those 3D glasses alone. If you quit, if you keep messing with them, you're gonna lose them and they're gonna fall, and we're not gonna be able to tell where they went, and you're not gonna be able to see the movie. But Chase is just consistently messing with the 3D glasses. The people behind me, they're enjoying me fussing with Chase. They're laughing about it. The people in front of us, they turn around. It's the music because Chase is having a good time taking the glasses on, taking the glasses off. He's just having a good time. Then finally, finally, something happens. Chase drops the glasses. Giselle goes, oh. And then all of a sudden, RJ, Reese, David, everybody look down the road and see what's going on with us, and they just freeze. The people behind me freeze. The people in front of me turn around and freeze. And so Chase is what he does. He looks down the road at them, and he looks straight ahead. <laughs> he looks down at the ground, and he can see the edge of his glasses under the chin, and then he looks back up and just looks straight ahead. Then he looks at me, finally, and I'm giving him the meanest grandpa I'm gonna kick your butt look I can give him. And Chase looks at me looking at him like that, and then he turns and he looks straight ahead again. Get this now. And then he puts this big smile upon his face, and he screams out loud, my bad. See, 
took my sanitizer and a pop up kid, I always keep it. So wiped the glasses off, went back up to my grandson, just put him back on his face. And that's what God wants to do with you. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. It's dare to be different. Dare to be different. Yes. Request by Jesus. They go against the grain of what Christianity was all about in the past. See, in the past, you did everything in the church. But look at this word. Jesus is telling folk you got to do it outside the church. I want you to go behind the four walls. That was just a quick plug for our church. For our ideas and friends. I want you to go outside the church. I want you to go beyond the four walls. And I want you to tell everybody who I am. My God is looking for some folk that aren't ashamed to do this in a different way. My God is looking for some folks that aren't ashamed to stand up and say, I'm here. I'm at this church. My God is looking for some folks that aren't ashamed to tell the world that I'm a better person than what I used to be. My God is looking for some folks that dare to do a difference in the past. All you did was think about you, but now all you do is thinking about Jesus. My God is looking for some folks that ain't ashamed to go and tell somebody, this is who I used to be. This is what I used to do, but this is what I am now that God is still working on me. My God is looking for some folk that aren't ashamed to tell somebody I'm a work in progress. Progress folk up in the church today. Do I have any all the perfect folk? Keep your hand down. But everybody that's a work in progress, I dare to put your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Yes, my God is looking for some folk that want to be a difference. Uh, hey, I'm looking for some folk here, some young people that dare to be different. Uh, if I get one more young person, uh, tell me about that they going out with somebody. If I get one more young person, tell me that they going with somebody. I'm a chicken, choke you myself. Uh, you can't, oh my God, uh, can I go there, parents, for just a minute? You can't even buy the toilet paper to clean your behind or the soap that it take to wash your behind. But you run around here talking about, I'm going with somebody. I'm looking for some young folk that dare to be different. Do I have any dare to be different young folk over here? Then stand up on your feet right now. I'm looking for some young folk that will come to me and not tell me about how you date Pookie or not tell me about how you date Shaquita. But I'm looking for some young folk that will come to me and let me know that I'm going steady, but I'm in a multiple relationship. You see, I'm not dating just one person. I'm seeing science and I'm going study with religion and, and I'm dating uh, theology and I'm dating mathematics and I'm seeing English and I'm seeing them all at the same time. I'm in a multiple relationship with educating my mind and educating my soul and educating my life. Oh, wish I could stay here. Can I stay here for just a minute? I'm looking for some young people that will run to me from grades 8 to grades 12 and tell me I'm pre-engaged. And I'll celebrate with you. Pre-engaged to who? I'm pre-engaged to Ball State. I'm pre-engaged to Notre Dame. I'm pre-engaged to Harvard. I'm pre-engaged to Yale. I'm pre-engaged to IU. I didn't forget you, Chip. I'm pre-engaged to Purdue. I'm pre-engaged to going to college and getting a degree. I ain't thinking about no relationship or laying up with nobody. I'm going to be somebody. Or I wish I had some folks with me. You know what? The Holy Ghost told me to do this. I want all the young people to come down front right now. All of my young people. Oh, come on, parents. Don't get quiet. Give God a praise. A oh, marriage ceremony. Yeah, you about to get married right now. Yes, at a very early age. And you don't need your parents' permission because Jesus said so. I want you to repeat after me right now. I state your name. Some of y'all ain't saying nothing. I state your name. State your name again. Be well. Myself. To Jesus the Christ. For better. For worse. For sicker. And poor. For riches. And in hell. To never forsake. Never forsake. All the days of my life. I take thee. As my Savior. With a vow, and I say, Amen. Oh, come on and say, Amen. Come on and say, Amen. Come on and say, 
creator. They got the glasses on now. And there's something that happened in 3D movies because I hadn't been to a 3D movie. 3D movie is just like being there live. And, and so it's stuff that comes out of the screen. Yes, it does. I'm tripping. I'm like, man, good thing I don't care a pistol no more. Stuff was coming out at the screen. And flowers were coming out. And the moon was coming out. And characters were coming out. And all kind of things were coming. And it looked like they're coming right at you. Or, or I wish I had somebody with me right now. And here they come, coming right at And then all of a sudden, Chase and Giselle, as everything would come out, they would just reach as though it was theirs. Here comes a flower, they would reach. Here comes a mountain, they would reach. There comes an animal, they would reach. And I, I'm looking at them reach. The sun came up over a plane, they reached. And they weren't reaching like they was grabbing. They was reaching like it was theirs. And then I start saying something to myself. If God can make my grandbabies, if God can make a child believe that he or she can reach for something and it's theirs, then why can't I get a grown folk up in the church today that's been in denial to believe that today that everything that God has promised you is obtainable. Oh, I know you did what you said you wouldn't do. I know you went where you said you wouldn't go. But do I have anybody today that believe there are blessings in the atmosphere? Do I have anybody today that believe there's a miracle in the atmosphere? That I dare to reach for that stuff like it's yours Oh, you ain't got 3D glasses, uh, but you got a 3D Savior. God is Father, God is Son, uh, and God is Holy Ghost. Uh, and if the kids could reach uh, because they believed it. Uh, oh, see, some of y'all still sitting down, uh, and that's because Satan got you in denial. But if you are here today, uh, and you want a new start, uh, if you are here today, uh, and you believe you're going to make it, uh, why day to think about the stuff uh, that you think that you need? Uh, and I day to believe right now that God has got that stuff uh, in front of your face uh, and I dare the whole house uh, to just reach uh, for the first thing uh, reach uh, for the second thing uh, reach uh, for the thing that you think you need uh, reach uh, for the provisions uh, reach uh, for your prosperity uh, reach uh, for your hope uh, come out of denial uh, put your hand out uh, it's going by you right now uh, Satan wants you to sit still but a child of God uh, that believes in God uh, knows he's in the blessed business uh, and he's got your stuff going by uh, do I have anybody that'll reach uh, for a better tomorrow reach uh, for your forgiveness reach uh, to get out of debt reach uh, for your rent money reach uh, for your condo reach uh, for your hope uh, reach uh, for your prosperity say yeah 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 where my reach is at 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 on the strength of this word I'm asking that we will all stand and remain standing right now because somebody here